You don't seem like a friendless person. How does one make friends? Hi. My God, there's a terrible light in there. Oh, Nathan! <laughs> Are you getting nervous? I've just never gone viral before, you know? <laughs> together. By here I mean on the floor of my studio chatting. I was sort of on a rant about friendship. Specifically how when you're a kid you're kind of put in these sardine cans with all your peers in very close quarters and that that really helps to facilitate friendship. You have a limited group of people and when you choose to love someone then you start to really love them. That was essentially the thesis of that video. I wanted to talk to two of my friends and just pick their brain about friendship, what they think about it, how do they do it. I think they had some good insights. So let's go. I'm about to call Chris, who is a new adult friend. We also became friends during the pandemic. We haven't met each other. <laughs> this will be fun. Oh, I don't have his number. How should I send you the <laughs> link? Okay, Chris just sent me his email so that I can send him a Zoom invitation. This feels pretty indicative of how little we know each other. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm well. I didn't know I had to be camera ready, so I might put on a t-shirt instead of a <laughs> I've been watching Dark Crystal. I don't know what that is. You know Dark Crystal? You ever see Labyrinth? No. What? No, but the thing is, I feel like you need to know. I didn't grow up here. Oh. I grew up mostly in China and the Philippines, but a bunch of other countries too, like Pakistan, Papua New Guinea, and what? Romania. Yeah. Well, you might use this. Let me change my shirt real quick. Let's <laughs> okay, okay, yeah. I think we're getting along. Cool. Look at me. So how did you maintain friends? It was easy and natural for me. Up until eighth grade, I moved in the middle of my eighth grade year. And that was the first time that I was like, oh, I have to put like some effort into it. <laughs> I think it has affected me later on in my life. I love people, but I generally don't feel the need to like stay in touch super often. I'm similar to that, actually. Because not everybody's like that, I've learned. <laughs> no, people get mad. I'm the same way. I don't need constant communication, but that's interesting because I grew up in the same space since I was like two. I lived in Ohio. So that's interesting that you yeah, were. So maybe I would have been like that no matter what. I think it's parenting. That's my theory. I've been <laughs> listening to a lot. I don't know why. <laughs> I've been listening to a lot of stuff about parenting because I think it's fascinating. But a lot of it is developing like an internal sense of security for a person mm -hmm. so that when they go out in the world, they don't have this sense of I'm being rejected because it's me. Because then once they have that like internal clock going on of, of security, they don't look at their value as being determined by other people's actions. They're usually like, oh yeah, that person's just busy. We just had really good parents, basically. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I mean, I, I feel like I did. They did yeah. such a good job. And given their circumstances, I'm like, I like now tell them that I'm like, you guys, thank you. Like, I know it wasn't easy, but like, you really made it happen. I was trying to think, like, how did we become friends? I was scrolling through our entire DMs on Instagram, because that's when we met. Then it hit me that our friendship started from a dark place. So this is what happened. I'm creating on Soul Pancake, right? I'm the first person to be on their TikTok. And all of a sudden, I see your TikTok. I immediately became really angry. <laughs> I became really angry. And I go to Tiffany. I'm like, Tiffany, look at this TikTok. My girlfriend at the time. She's like, it's really good. And I was like, I know it's really good. And I was like, but I'm the one who makes good things. So I'm like, I'm, I'm like the only child of this. And she's like, well, isn't it nice that like you can connect with them? And I was like, oh, I guess so. And so then I saw that stuff making like tagged her thing. I was like, oh, I'll find out who this Sophie is. And I was already these... following you. Oh, you, well, that's, that's so delightful of you. <laughs> Here I was hating you. And then. <laughs> And so I follow you and then you post one of the TikToks. I respond and I'm like, this is so great, right? Which was true. That's exactly how I felt. But then you were so nice. <laughs> you were like, oh my God, like, yours are really great too. You're such a natural. I'm not always angry when people do good things. Like I'm generally happy about it. <laughs> Usually I like tell people that, like I'll see something they do and I'm like, this is really great. And most people will say like, thanks. Or like they'll leave me on red. But you just went into like, full conversation. <laughs> like, I think that's it. Cause I can talk, 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 talk. And to have someone who like, 
takes it in and like also does the same. Right. That was it. When I looked back up, I was like, oh, that's how we became friends. Yeah. That is hilarious because I'll tell you what, when I was responding to you, I remember thinking like, he's not as into this as I am. I just sensed it. Then I I went back to look at our Instagrams. So I was like, no, he's being so nice. No, you, felt, you felt something through the, through the text at first. I just saw mm-hmm. your TikToks and I was like, I love what she's doing. And I just, it just went straight to anger. I was like, oh yeah, like we became friends because we had common interests and stuff. And I was like, no, it's because you're a jealous, small, small person. (laughs) I feel like a lesson in that for me is that sometimes you might sense a little bit of like discomfort or negativity, but you open yourself up, then maybe you can like move past that. Yeah, just like pushing a, just, just a little. You know, I think honestly, it was just it was the receptiveness you responded with. It wasn't just on the level of like, oh, that sucks. It was like, oh, this is difficult for me. And like, I see that I understand that. And I think when that like, it's like a tennis game when that back and forth was happening, all of a sudden, it's like, ah, okay, cool. So I can like, let you know about other stuff that's going on in my life. What would be your account of it? I felt close to you before we started talking about faith, not just faith, but like life after death. How do you think of like the divine? For me, like a good friendship has the levity and like joyfulness. I had already like sensed that from you. But then like the other part that is really important for me in a friendship is also the depth. And I think once we kind of hit on both of those things, I was like, oh, I feel really like a friend. Yeah. You put out publicly on social the question about death. When I was thinking about it, I was like, oh, she's obviously thinking about it and thinking about it publicly, which not many people are not many people do. Your vulnerability outward allowed for that. And you know, it's hard to get into those kind of conversations. As an adult, you kind of just like deliberately break the ice and just be like, I'm going in. Are you with me? Are you not? And if you're not cool, like I'll I'll back off. But yeah, you have to kind of go with a leap of faith, I feel like. I wouldn't be surprised if we both have similar needs, like maybe a need for community. It's true. I'm someone who loves and needs to be in community with other people. And I'm always like thinking about how to like expand that community and right. I also wonder if friends like cap, you know, like when you're in fifth grade, you're like, all right, my roster's open, kind of like Pokemon. It's like, I don't have any yet. (laughs) So like, who wants to come in? But I think as an adult, you almost like solidify your roster. When you have transitional moments in life, it kind of like opens up a little bit again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you go into high school, you're like, great, you go into college. Who are all these people? Moving, like moving to LA. It's like my roster has to open up a little bit. (laughs) You know, it's like we're like pen pals. Yeah, exactly. I feel like I've experienced it where it just like does not translate. You can like have a good rapport and like banter over text, but it just doesn't translate to talking. And I I I mean I don't wanna like I don't wanna be too for whatever you're about to say, I agree. I 100% agree. Yeah, this friendship can continue. It's made it past this hurdle and I approve. Hi! Why do you look so good in this light and I look terrible? <laughs> what happened to my jawline? I used to have one. You know, when I first met, maybe not when I first met him, after we become friends and he felt comfortable with me, he was like, I have to ask you, is LA in California or is California in LA? <laughs> All right, Sophie, where's Stoke? Where's Rotherham? Where's Huddersfield? Tell me. It's just bloody American bias, isn't it? It's just the American exceptionalism. It's true, it's true. You remember the time that we were walking to Bashi and then the massive dog came from the fence and I left <laughs> you in front. I feel like that was a theme in our friendship, getting yourself out of the line of fire and putting me in its path. Some of us like you, you know, we're, we're, we're in this world to sacrifice ourselves. And then some of us are meant to shine. (laughs) And it's the privilege of people like you to allow people like me to shine. This makes me think about something I've always felt in our friendship. Because we met in Haifa, then I went back to the US, you went back to London. And even though I'm half English, half American, I'm I'm not very English culturally. I was going to say, really? I never knew. (laughs) Shut up. (laughs) It's like surprising to me that we are still friends because not only do we have cultural differences, you're hilarious. You can crack jokes constantly and have a very like dry, intelligent wit, and I don't. <laughs> so, like I like even just now, like you made. It, I don't, think, made it I don't think that's fair. I think you're selling yourself a bit short. I remember the first time you ever properly made me laugh was when you did this impression of this English kid you went to school with. Was it? Was that him? 
they owe something. Oh yeah. We have this conversation all the time, right? Like why are we <laughs> still friends? There's not many friendships that can strike a balance of helping each other reflect and helping each other like grow, but also not being too precious about that part of the friendship. You won't just like agree with me all the time, right? You'll give me like a new perspective, but also that's not our whole friendship. I don't know. What do you think? No, I think we went through like a, a year like that together. It kind of, it, it bonds you, but you're right. There was always a, a, I think ultimately a lightness to our friendship. I think maybe it allows for difficult explorations because, you know, when, you know, if either of us are struggling with something or have questions, then we know that it'll ultimately be kind of a lighthearted and funny conversation as well. Sometimes I think, that's, I, at least that's the way I often deal with things. I don't know. Sometimes it might frustrate people. I, I tend to think that when things are very serious, that's the best time to, to laugh at things. And I also think it's interesting, since we were together for that year at the Baha'i World Center in Haifa, living in the same country, how many times have we actually seen each other? At most, sorry, on two hands, right? Yeah, and I think like barely on two hands. Your wedding, my wedding, that like 30 minutes we spent at the train station in London with my mom. Oh yeah, yeah, serious wedding. Those weeks in Spain. Five. No, it's, it's gotta be more in there. You came to New York, I was gone. That was funny. That was when you told me you were engaged. Do you wanna tell that story? I think this is a funny story. You should set the scene actually. So Nathan and I, at this point, were like, we were telling each other we're best friends. You planned this whole trip to New York, but you hadn't confirmed it really. And then when you did confirm it, you like booked the tickets and I told you, I'm not gonna be here. I'm actually gonna be in Australia. I think it was like a tough moment. <laughs> You were, it was, no? But it, the reason I wasn't there is because I was getting to know David and we were going to get engaged probably on that trip. So you ended up staying in my apartment. On your leather couch. I just had this distinct memory. It was leather and it was hot and that AC was oh. overworked. <laughs> On the other side of the world, in Australia, I had just gotten engaged. Super exciting. So while I was sweating on a leather couch, you were like <laughs> on a beach with a new ring. Yeah. <laughs> I call Nathan. He doesn't even say hello to me. <laughs> I say, Nathan! And he goes, what's your Wi-Fi? <laughs> I started laughing. I was like, oh, haha, ha, very funny. Because I assumed you would know why I'm calling you in the middle of the night. You know, I had just gone on this this trip. You knew I was like getting to know David. But I feel like that was just so characteristic of our friendship. And then I told you I was engaged. And then you texted me. But really, what's the one <laughs> Really, did I actually? <laughs> we stayed good friends. I think ultimately, there's never really been a period we haven't really spoken that much. You know, you know, there's always there's friends that are like, oh, hey, how are you, friends? You know? mm -hmm. And then there's a the friend, you just think of something and you send something funny, you right? You just like, flip in yeah. and out of conversation with them. Exactly. A tacit understanding about the friendship, yeah. All sort of close friendships I have, and it's, it's true of relationships, and it's particularly true in marriage, is that communication, a lot of it is, is without words. And there's, there's a kind of understanding between two people about what the other person is like and there's and then you just find that you this is why we say we click with some people you don't click with others of course we can we show love to everyone we come across but um, mm -hmm. sort of uh understanding that in, in good friendships about how the other person operates ultimately in every single relationship breakdowns occur when people's expectations aren't met that's true but i think we've, we've also been able to poke fun at each other right yeah. like that's ultimately very important part too. I think that's true. The friendships that I really love, there's always an element of, of teasing because my mom teased us relentlessly growing up. It's like another love language. I remember someone saying to me, it was so simple, but really it's always stuck with me. For the most part, life is quite difficult. And so you just have to laugh but all the time. You just have to. All relationships I have, the best ones have always been ones characterized and filled with laughter. You, but mm -hmm. God, that was very earnest, wasn't it? It was very earnest of me. It's unlike you to be so sincere. It really is, actually. I'm stuck in a sort of postmodern haze most of the time. What we haven't talked about is that you have me to thank for your marriage. <laughs> That's true. It's a, it's, a, it's, a bit, it's a bit strong to say it's totally true. <laughs> but no, you actually sounded like you were going to say something quite sincere there. Please carry on, I interrupted you. I remember texting you because David had, I think he was on tour with Valis Alps playing some like wedding in Jamaica or something. <laughs> yeah. And he posted some picture by a grand piano where he looked unbelievably handsome. And I just it just struck me. It struck me like a lightning cord to that. I'm gonna insert I, that photo here. 
yeah, yeah, you should because he's just looking so smart, man. Is he in a tux or something? Or is, actually, you know, it's like slightly open neck, and he actually has chest hair, looking cool. <laughs> I remember. I guess like part of friendship is like something you can't quite name. Hmm. Wow, <laughs> not to get too mushy. <laughs> I think what I realized in talking to both Nathan and Chris and reflecting on those conversations was that as an adult, to make friends, you still need those sardine cans often. Not always, but it's helpful, just like when you're a kid. And sometimes you have to create your own sardine cans, whether it's a book club or a class that you want to take. And sometimes those sardine cans are made for you, like your workplace. But once you recognize that it is a sardine can and it's ripe for friendship, then you can find really special people. But if there's any sort of secret recipe for friendship, the ingredients include things like vulnerability, reciprocity, and openness, meaningful conversations, the right balance of depth and joy, and humor. A lot of humor, at least for me. When I think about all of my friendships, each one of them has a little bit of all of those ingredients. And maybe other people have different recipes, but at least for me, those are some of the key things I need. That's all. I was how, there. How old are, are we the same age? I don't know. I think. How do you th how do you think I am? How do I? Let's see. I think you are twenty eight. I was gonna guess that you were twenty eight. I'm twenty nine. I'm twenty six. Wow. Yeah. I totally thought. Well, also you're married, so that puts you like yeah, that immediately yeah. makes people think you're way older than you are. I was at NYU at the same time. Really. You were undergrad, but but I had a girlfriend who was undergrad, and I also performed with Danger Box. You didn't do, you weren't into the improv group then. <laughs> Doesn't matter. I was a grad student. I didn't care about the <laughs> social politics then. Twenty six. You're. I mean, not to sound like, but like your brain technically just solidified at like twenty five. So <laughs> that's a, developmentally. That's what they say. Do I look more? Do I look better? So it's like a this. But the problem is you can see the screen, and, but they're actually kind of wonky. I'm not sure if you can notice. Oh, I can't tell. But they look great. You a look real friend would be able to tell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working with Zoom here.